Hey guys, so we got a little bit of an update for you. Um, this weekend, Tosh and I got something done that we really needed to get done soon, and we didn't get really get any video of it. We got some video of the prep work to do said thing, and uh, when it came down to doing said thing, it was just so tedious, and we were out of our zone. We were at a family friend, or a family member's house, using their space to work on the van, so we really didn't get any video. But the van is now red. God, it looks so much better. Now, I do need to go back over and do the door jams, as you can see. We're coming back at you. We're gonna put in a two kilowatt Chinese diesel heater. So basically, this is the air in, so like cold air will be sucked in for combustion. This will be the exhaust combusted air. There's a little factory hall. I don't know what it was used for, but the cable, whatever it was used for is no longer there. You can actually see outside, God, this thing's a mess, I need to clean it up. We may actually run it through there. That's so one and an eighth inch. Test fit here, everything is fitting well, so we're gonna go ahead with the next part. You can see where the holes are. This heat shield here, I'm gonna take this bolt off and bend this up out of the way a bit so that we have enough room to do what we need to do. Now I have decent access to here. Not the greatest, but it should give us enough to do all the things we need to do. Though so the next step is to essentially rust proof these holes and to do that I'm going to use some high temp 415. I actually already had this on hand. So that's basically why I'm using it. If you are someone that's using 415, uh, whether it be the high temp version or the normal version, the best way to open it is to take a drill and drill a hole in the top. Be careful, this can get messy. And then pour it into another container, the amount you want to use, and then take a piece of duct tape and seal the hole. That is the very best way. I actually have a can sitting over here that's open this way. This is normal pour 15, and it's been sitting for probably at least five months. It hasn't cured yet. There's still some in there. So hopefully that'll help some of you guys out. A lot of people say the supplied fuel filter is crap. So I bought a, a pack of five on Amazon. This one on the left is from Amazon, and this one on the right came with it. You can tell it kind of looks dirty. And if you look really close, this uh, mesh or whatever it is on the Amazon one looks a lot finer than this one. So some people also say they don't even use a fuel filter and they've never had an issue. But um, if you get any fuel that has like dirt or just any kind of particulate, like dirt, you may be in for some trouble. But I've also, like I said, seen people say they haven't used a fuel filter in over a year running and had no issues. But yeah, so now we're going to start, uh, we're going to tap into our existing booster heater fuel line using this brass piece, this T piece. Um, I'll put the size overlaid in the video. I forgot off the top of my head what it is. So this right here in front of me is the diesel tank to the van. And right above here in the corner, make sure you guys can see this. This is the fuel pump for the stock heater booster. Not all sprinters have this, um, but if you do, you'll have this button. I'll overlay a picture in your dash. It means you have basically a five, I think it's a five kilowatt S bar mounted under your hood. And so this is the fuel pump for it. That also means you guys already have an auxiliary line ran that you can just tee off of, which is right here. You can see it's a little wet with diesel right now. So I'm going to tee off of this and get my own to install this second fuel pump. So I'm going to put you guys down because there's no room for me to do this with you guys. You can see it peeking out there. It's actually about to drip. So I trimmed that down and I'm going to reattach it to the tee right here. Um, with just to work with in front of my face holding the camera with this this is gonna the fuel line's gonna come in here there's gonna be a clamp on this side and then it's gonna connect to the T here and clamp on this side I'm about to install my fuel filter here the top down and we're gonna put this on this T I don't know if you guys can see that but hopefully so because this filter needs to be mounted vertically so now I've got the filter mounted here and now I've got another black tube I've got to put, and then that'll turn into the petroleum little silicone tube. And I think what we're going to do is try to mount the pump somewhere around here. As you can see on this little lip. And we'll run the silicone tube to that. We'll have to put another little thing of the black tube to convert to the pump. 
And then on the other side, I'll go back to the silicon tube somewhere over here. And then I think we're going to try to run it along this little, this section goes down all the way over here. If you can see the heater inlet is over here. So if we can just stick that all the way down, I think that would get us exactly what we need. It is now time to mount the fuel pump, which I've got right here. Oh God, I just dropped a bolt on my face. Uh, I got it right here. Um, you can see this little arrow. Well, you may not be able to see, but there's a little arrow here that shows the flow of the fuel. And basically the fuel is gonna flow up towards where the connector side is. So I'm gonna mount this in this factory hole right here. And this needs to be pointing upwards at about 45 degree angles towards the connector. My neighbor just came by and told me it's gonna start raining any moment. So I gotta start packing things up and we'll just it's supposed to snow a little bit tomorrow, hopefully not bad, and it just melts and the sun uh, evaporates everything, we can get back to it. So I've hung this pump with zip ties, heavy duty zip ties. I drilled the second hole in this little plastic bracket. And the reason I did this is because this pump actually makes a lot of noise. And so if you screw it down onto the underside of the van, that noise is gonna resonate through the entire van and it's really loud. A lot of people have really enjoyed the sound after they just hang it with zip ties. Um, I'll probably come through here and hit these little spots where it's actually zip tied to the frame with some um, silicone just so it doesn't really move as much. Um, but we'll see how it performs. It's, it's at a roughly 30, 35 degree angle. It's kind of tilted sideways, but you know, I've been sitting here playing with it. It always comes back to the near correct angle, so I think it should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and run from this fuel hose, the thinner fuel line, attach it to the pump, and we'll start making our way towards where the heater will be. So now I have got the fuel pump mounted and I've got the fuel line going to the fuel pump and the fuel line coming out. So now all that's left is to go back over here and run this fuel line above this heat shield and get it to where the heater is gonna be. And then basically I just have to connect it to the heater and then I have to run some cable and then I still need to connect the exhaust and the air intake to the heater. And then we'll be all done. Um, still quite a bit to do. Just taking it a step at a time to mount this line, there's, there's a little hole right here that I can mount to, uh, right here. And to do that, I'm gonna take some of these cheap Chinese um, hose clamps, and I took the screw out and the bolt out, and I'm just gonna set this against the hole and then run the bolt back through, and that'll kind of act as a little holder and it'll fit the hose really well. And I have extras because I bought a 10 pack of better quality hose clamps um, that I've mostly used. I actually did have to use a couple of these Chinese ones, but I'm gonna watch and make sure they don't leak. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna mount these. And there's another hole over here closer to where the heater is. Mount these and run the cable through, and I think that's gonna do a great job. So I've got one clamp hung. Um, I actually decided to stop here and get the wiring harness because it would make sense if I ran the wiring harness through the same route and just kind of zip tied it to the diesel line. So, uh, I'm gonna get the wiring harness. I'm actually gonna have to cut it to get it through here because that, that hole that we're running it through, I don't know if you can see it, but we're gonna run it through this hole and it's not gonna fit the plug. So we'll have to cut, rewire, and heat shrink. So I've got the wiring harness here. Uh, I went ahead and split the connector off. Both these lines are green. I actually put that mark on there. So in my case, there was no differentiation. I'm glad I didn't just snip them. So it would've been a pain to figure out which cable should have went where. And I did the same thing on the other end. You can see there's a purple, well, it looks black line. And then to reconnect these, I'm gonna use these awesome little solder, solder and, so, I don't know, is it solder or solder? I don't know. I've got a solder, soldering iron, but um, it's easier for me to just bust out some of these connectors. And this is a 16 gauge wire. And what you can actually do is just take a little torch, you put the wire through here and take a torch and it'll solder and heat shrink the wires all in one. Right there, and it kind of crosses over down this way. And I have it pulled through this little hole here. And then I'll get it out from the close point of the exhaust. It's still near the exhaust, but it's not as close. So it's gonna go right up here to the heater. Now you can tell I'm working in a really small space. I threw the heater in here. And literally, this hole for this hose is against this beam. So it's very tight space. So what I ended up doing was, I actually, for this, um, this is the air in. This is where it's gonna suck in the air, and then that's gonna be the exhaust. 
And so what I ended up having to do is actually run this through the hole first and then connect to the heater and then push the heater down through. And now I'm pushing this clamp up. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this clamped first because like I said, there's so little space right here. I really think I'm gonna have problems if I try to do it last. So I'm gonna knock that out real quick and then we will work on connecting the fuel line and then the exhaust and mounting these two or the four bolts to hold the heater down and give it a good seal. I wanted to give you an update before I called it a night. So this is actually where the heater's installed. This, you can see the fuel line here, air intake here, and then this other pipe will be the exhaust. I still have to put on these two bolts. And then at that point, we'll almost be done. We basically, at that, uh, after I get the exhaust routed, we just have to um, get everything wired up with the electrical part. Uh, I'm gonna call it a night. Tasha just told me dinner's done and I need to take the dogs out. So I'll follow up with you guys tomorrow. We'll get this thing wrapped up and finally get it tested. I'm excited. So I have got the air intake fully seated. It's sitting behind this bar. Now typically you want the exhaust and the air intake to point to the back of the vehicle. That way you can have the heater running while you're driving. And the reason for that is because if you have it facing forward and you're driving, it may force air into the air intake and that'll actually blow the flame out on the heater. Now, if you don't have the air intake hanging down and exposed to where air will be blowing directly into it. See, I kind of have it inside this beam and there's actually a wall right here, but there's openings on the side. So I think this should be fine. And the reason I'm putting it forward is because my vehicle's exhaust system is right here. There's really not many places for you to put it other than right next to the exhaust for the heater itself. And I really don't like that either. So I'm kind of picking the best of two evils. Sorry, there's road equipment driving by. Um, but I've I've just clamped the exhaust pipe here and kind of bent it. And I really, really want to make this longer. Um, unfortunately, if you cut this pipe, it becomes a huge pain to get remounted because the diameter, you could hammer it out to make it flat and then put your exhaust in the middle, which is what I was wanting to do. But I'm gonna buy another one of these tubes and hopefully extend it down. Uh, Cause I want it to come out past the passenger door, like where it ends. Uh, where it's gonna come out right here is actually in between the front driver door and the passenger door. Um, it's just kind of all I can do right now. So I've also taken, I got two of these little brackets uh, with the heater and I didn't use either of them. So I'm actually bending them to form this new bracket which is gonna mount the muffler. I'm gonna make one more of this cause this is pretty flimsy. I can bend this by hand. So I'm gonna bend this one to fit and then we're gonna mount them together kind of as one. As you can see, the bracket worked pretty well. This is about the position I wanted it in. That way it's not like overly obvious it's here. Let's see, let's see how it looks from standing up. What a view. So you really, it's not very noticeable. The last thing to do uh, before we wire this sucker up is to take this hole saw, make our hole, and run the last bit of tubing here. I've clamped it down here and then I've just shoved it through here because I want to paint this silver exposed metal and God, I need to clean up all these metal shavings. But I'm just shoving it through here just to test with. Uh, I still have to go over there and wire that up. So I'm gonna wire that up now. All right guys, so I'm about to prime the pump. All I did to hold, get to the prime mode is you hold down the settings button and I think it was the down arrow, one of these arrows and it'll say HOF. Now if I push it up, it'll go to on and start pumping. I'm gonna set you guys down there so you can hopefully get a view of fuel priming. firing up now. You can feel air coming out of it, but it's cold. I believe it takes about two to three minutes for the thing to really fire up and get going. All right, guys, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any value from this video, please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like and tune in for next week's video. We'll see you then.